Hey everybody, it's Dave, Blue Jacket 66 here for another video. Uh, continuing my slide away from vintage sports cards videos, I could certainly make one. I could make one every day, pull stuff out, show stuff you've seen before and a lot of stuff you haven't seen ever. But I've been a little bit on this uh, Marvel and superheroes kick. Uh, it's not a new thing for me, but it's kind of a new thing to show. And uh, just to keep the... Uh, channel fresh. I thought I'd do a video on some vintage comic books, in particular Marvel comic books, which is primarily what I read as a kid. In the background, this is an unopened box in 1990. Uh, Marvel superheroes, the trading cards. I've showed my series one and two sets. I have all four sets series, but uh, this is an unopened box of them. The gem mint cards are the things to go for. That's this thing that's a little bit uh, distressing as I'm watching videos recently. Um, a few things are one is you know Pokemon gem mint ten. That's what you're looking for. Comic books, these Bronze Age and more modern. All they talk about is nine point eight gem mint comics in the CGC. Um, and for what I've always collected, uh, that's never been affordable. It's, it's a lot more uh, out of grasp than it used to be. But uh, with my comics, I think I'll talk a little bit about where I come from. Um, when I was, uh, I've said this before, so I'm just not gonna repeat it over and over again, but when we took family trips, which we did every year. My dad was a school teacher, so he was off summer, so we were off either vacationing or he was working on his master's or we traveling around. Essentially, we listened to uh, AM gold stations where I grew up listening to nothing but 70s classic, 70s rocks, uh, the Beatles, Grand Funk Railroad, you name it, I loved it. It was a huge influence on me. But in the backseat of that station wagon where there was no such thing as littering and there was no such thing as seat belts, I read comic books for hours and hours on end and that's how I learned to read. Primarily, I read Spider-Man comic books and on the backseat of that station wagon and on the floorboard uh, for every trip, I would have hundreds of comic books. Primarily Spider-Man, a hell of a lot of X-Men, some Fantastic Four, and then a spattering of other things. The Hulk, uh, never a huge DC guy, never had a lot of Batman, etc. I had a lot of little jinx, and I was a huge Archie fan. Tons of Archie comic books. So, back to the Marvel, I had, uh, without question, every Spider-Man comic book up to 150, including number two on up. And I read them. They were readers and they were trashed and trashed and every year they got more and more trashed. And uh, eventually when I was in college, uh, I brought a box of them to a comic book slash card store, as I recall when I was in college, and gave them all away. I, I did get 60 bucks. Um, I don't remember keeping any, saying, hey, I'm gonna keep this one other than my number one Conan the Barbarian, I think I kept. But it's not like they have a lot of value. They have a lot of sentimental value, and that's what I regret, is the sentimental value, because they were essentially had been be beaten up. They were just in terrible condition, but I wouldn't trade that for anything, because I grew up on the Spider-Man story, and I knew it by heart. I knew everything about Aunt May. I knew everything about Gwen Stacy. I knew everything. Um, and it's funny that, uh, you know, it hit me hard with the death of Gwen Stacy, you know, Spider-Man number 121 and number 122. Uh, that hit me like really hard. And at that point I was like, I think I'm, what more is there with Spider-Man? And so by the time the Punisher and Moribus and those things came around and I had those books, uh, I was, that's about the time that I was kind of done with buying Spider-Man and having every single one. But you know what happens when you get older and this is what collecting is all about. You collect what you love, and a lot of what you love is comes from your childhood. So I'm gonna highlight this. The reason I'm doing this uh, video is 
I'm gonna show some comic books that, uh, I always bought comic books when I started quote unquote collecting. I, I would say more accumulating. I'm no way a comic book expert at all. And I love watching comic book videos. A lot of the videos now are more on more modern stuff and I don't understand all these reissues and whatnot. I'm more of a silver age guy. Uh, but, and I, <laughs> it took me a while before I even understood the whole Venoms things and the black suit thing, because that was after I was done, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but I do love, Kate and I love the Marvel movies, and I think the Venom movie was fantastic. So as far as Spider-Man goes, the issue to get is the number 300, which is uh, the origin and first appearance of Venom. So here it is. It's really hard for me with being up this close, but it's in a 9.6, 9.8s, of course, are, are the perfect um, and quite a bit more spent, expensive, but that wasn't so important to me because I'm not buying this because I want to flip it in a year or two. The price has already increased significantly since when I bought this, and I just bought it uh, two weeks ago. I don't know if you guys... If you're ever interested in comics or want to look up or what they're worth or auctions, I do Comic Link, C O M I C L I N K dot com. It's just sign up and you can actually go by past auctions and see what the values were. And you, of course, you can always find values anywhere, but tons of auctions. And uh, so here it is the number 300 Venom, which has a nice cover and it's a first appearance. And, um, Again, when I, I love covers more, I'm not a first appearance guy. I love that Silver Age art, and it is art, and it's fantastic. And I know I'm biased, but I think the artwork is so much better than uh, than it is now. Although I'm sure there's fantastic artwork, and I'm sure it, you know how it is to each his own. But uh, anyway, this is pred to have that in my collection. So what about a first, so some first appearances have fantastic artwork. For instance, uh, Spider-Man number 41, the first appearance of the Rhino. Clearly remember this on the floorboard of my car. My, not my car, my dad's car. It's in a 8.5. I guess this is an old CG, CGC holder. I don't know much about the holders, but first appearance but also a freaking unbelievable image what about first appearance but not the greatest image at all uh well this and this is what's strange about this so this one here it's a cool cover spider-man number 42 but this comic has in it mary jane watson's face revealed for the first time so this is on that very back page in the very back cover. And I remember reading the comic book and seeing it where she says, you know, she, Peter Parker goes over, he got set up on a blind date and he opens the door and here's this gorgeous redhead who says, uh, face it, tiger, you just hit the jackpot. And it's like a mic drop. Uh, and you bet your sweet bippy, I wanted to buy the next issue. Uh, so I could learn about this, uh, Mary Jane, who is now in his life along with Gwen Stacy. So not the greatest cover in the world, but let's be honest, it's a great cover. But this is one of these first appearances. And to be honest with you, that's one of the reasons I bought this book a while ago. It's for the first appearance. And it's encapsulated, and you'll never see that back panel. <laughs> that's the irony of it all. Uh, you know, you'll have first appearances and... The book's encapsulated, and you don't get to see it. That's all. So, along that same line, here she is in all her glory. This is the first Mary Jane Watson cover, which is kind of a neat cover, uh, but it's not a great cover, but it's another first of. It's in a 9.4. What about great books that aren't first of anything? Does it get much better than this one? 
Spider-Man 39. I think this book is on most lists is some of the most, one of the most iconic covers of all time. I've seen it in a top 10. I've, it's almost always in a, a top 50, but, and it struck me when I was a kid, hey, hey there's Peter Parker unmasked. I mean, I was ready to get into this book. Now, what, another thing we, uh, you have to think about, or I have to think about is, this is from August of 1966. So I was four years old. So when this book was on the floorboard of my parents' car or in my comic book box that I had, I had this big cabinet. I don't know where it came from. It was my dad's and, you know, so I, very few comic, I didn't start buying comic books on my own probably until 1970. So I grew up on these comic books that were handed down and uh, what a great, great cover, but not a first of anything. But I had to have this book and rebuy this book because I remembered it. And what a fantastic cover. I have a lot of graded comic books. I would describe my comic book collection as modest. And me as a knowledgeable about comics, a novice as well. But I was there and I experienced it. So that gives me a few brownie points. How about another just cover, but nothing really exciting happened in it. And I've gotten some of these books just because I love the cover. This Avengers, you know, with the, there's Dr. Doom and he always makes a fantastic cover. This isn't a nine, I, you know, this Jack Kirby covers. He, he does a lot of this early Marvel artwork, and he was just just a game changer. But another another book that has no significance, but I love the cover. There's a Fantastic Four. It's uh, Hulk and the Thing. This is an eight point five. It's from July of nineteen seventy one. Just a fantastic cover, but doesn't really have anything significant going on in it. All right. I think I'll show you one of my favorite comic books. I'm very proud of this one and it, it's pretty valuable. And this is one of the greatest Silver Age comic covers of all time in my book. And I don't think money anybody knows anything about comics or at least appreciates comics will disagree. Silver Surfer number four. It's got Thor and Loki appearance, and it's got some strange story that Loki uh, uh, is uh, tricking Thor and uh, the Silver Surfer into fighting themselves, but ultimately they figure out that Loki is uh, tricking them, so uh, Silver Surfer goes, goes back to Earth, and just... That cover is just incredible. It's in a 9.4, and this uh, this has always been pricey, but uh, pricey. This is really shot up. I mean, oh my goodness, look at that. That just is unreal cover. I mean, I loved Silver Surfer. I wasn't a big reader of him. He was a little too cerebral for me uh, as a kid, um, and I don't really think I had many of his books and I've always wanted to get Silver Surfer number one and I better get it before it just becomes unreachable. It's, it's not that expensive, but this cover just blows away, uh, Silver Surfer number one. Um, well, speaking of number ones, here's my Iron Man. Um, I got this from my dad, and I can't remember the story, but essentially I believe he may have had the artist, I can't remember, he, he had somebody in class that had something to do with this magazine, or this comic, so I don't really want to get it graded, I mean it's in... I know nothing about grading them. All I know is there's no creases, there's corner wear, the spine's intact, everything looks intact to me. And it's a super cool one. 
I probably should get it encapsulated, but Iron Man number one. Iron Man number two. Iron Man number three. Iron Man number four. Six, neat cover here with number seven, number eight, number nine. Anyway, it goes on and on. Most of my books are ungraded. Uh, I have a long run, started number one of the Submariner, but I am so not into him uh, at all. Um, here's another, do <laughs> Dr. Doom for some reason always fascinated me. He was a big Fantastic Four, so you had to really read the Fantastic Four to get into him. He's the big villain. I always love this cover here, so. It's another uh, example of nothing really fabulous happened in it, but a cool cover. And this one, my last one, is a co one of those cool covers, but something neat has happened. And that's my uh, number 20, 8.5, first appearance of the Scorpion. This is the Steve Ditko art. And... This is around the time where, you know, the early Spider-Mans, the art wasn't, it was comic bookish. I guess that's all I can say it was, I loved it. But around issue 20 or so, or after that, he was, I don't know, he was, he was less, he was less Archie Andrews art and more refined, just beautiful artwork. Not that I don't love the early stuff. I would love the f first Doc Ock. Uh, actually, I'd like well, all the early ones. My The book that I really want is... Uh, I've got to get my Spider-Man number two back. Uh, it was another one on the floorboard of the card, Lost. It's very expensive. It's the Vulture, first appearance of the Vulture. Uh, I've told this story that my dad got it. Uh, he was a teacher, and some kid was reading it in class. He taught high school geometry and trigonometry, and my dad was cool, but I, the kid must have been doing something really bad because evidently he took his comic book and threw it in his drawer, and the kid never got it back. And next thing you know, years later, it's at, my, it's at the house on the floorboard of my car, and I've got to get a number two, just in presentable uh, condition, just like I really want... Um, Fantastic Four number 12. That was another floorboard of the car. That's the one where they're down in some caves and coming down one tunnel of the cave is the Hulk and the adjoining tunnel is the Fantastic Four with the thing in the lead and they're about ready to, to adjoin and meet. And it, I'll never forget that cover of my car. I don't remember the story, but that is those two are my kind of bucket list. Spider-Man number two and that... Uh, Fantastic Four, I believe it's number 12. So that's some of my comics. I've got a lot more. I've got a lot more graded and a lot more ungraded, some are in the safety deposit box. But I really enjoy comics. Uh, it's uh, part of the childhood. It's beautiful. The stories are great. The artwork's great. The only problem is... Uh, storage i like to i like to set them out almost like pictures but you can only set out so many and the rest they're very stackable but i do worry about my ungraded ones because those seem to be prone to deterioration or damage despite having these backs on them so i think my next video will probably be <laughs> vintage sports card related uh i hope um but I thought you'd enjoy that, even if you're just a sports card collector. Um, 
channels are popping up and there's a lot of talk. Uh, people that are, same people that are getting into sports cards are getting into Pokemon and they're getting into comic books and a whole bunch of collectibles. And it's fun going and watching their videos. Um, so I hope some of you enjoyed it. I sure did. I'll talk to you later.